The title of my message is, Look Through the Blood. Many of us have loved ones that are not saved. Maybe it's your children, or maybe it's even your parents. The bottom line here is, most of us have someone that we know and care about that is not saved. God knows everything about each soul on planet earth. So we must trust that his spirit knows what it will take for each person to come to Jesus. If you look at souls through the blood of Jesus, you will see what they can become and you won't give up on them. Personal soul winning is about sharing the gospel with lost souls so they can be redeemed of their sins. We're not to take our own evaluation whether a soul deserves to be redeemed or not. I've been in many prisons throughout South Africa and in South America and we've come face to face with prisoners that have committed unthinkable crimes. But God still gave them the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ into their hearts. In man's eyes, many of those prisoners were not considered worth saving. But God looks at souls through the blood of Jesus and how they can be transformed And that's how we should look at souls, through the blood of Jesus. God looked at Saul through the blood and could see what he could become. Look at Saul. He was doing everything he could to stop the movement of Christianity. Because he didn't believe that Jesus was the son of God. Even if it meant putting Christians to death. That's how strong Saul felt against Christianity. So Saul got letters from the high priest to go to Damascus to search out Christians in the synagogues. It didn't matter if they were men or women. They were to be bound and brought to stand trial in Jerusalem. Saul was brought up in the Jewish faith. He was a Pharisee. So he was very strict in his religious beliefs. Saul was being used by the devil in a great way to persecute the early church. But God didn't write him off as a hopeless case. No, God could see the potential in Saul through the blood of Jesus. And he sees the potential in each one of you. And in any sinner that may be out there. God looks at what you can become through the blood of Jesus. God doesn't look at a sinner as a hopeless cause. He looks at a sinner as someone that he can save and turn into a witness for his honor and glory. So as Saul and his men were traveling to Damascus to arrest Christians, all of a sudden a light from heaven shines around Saul. Saul falls to the ground and hears the voice of of Jesus saying Saul Saul why persecutest thou me Saul responds back who art thou Lord the Lord said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks the Bible says that Saul was trembling and astonished He was no longer thinking about his task of rounding up Christians. He was focused on the reality of Jesus. When you are faced with the truth about Jesus, you will have a decision to make. 
to accept the truth or to reject the truth. At that moment, Saul was being presented with the truth. It was his time to face himself and to realize that he had been deceived. We all have to face ourselves when we are called unto repentance. Saul could have still rejected the truth. It was his choice, but praise God, he accepted the truth. When you receive Jesus into your heart, he will become so real to you. His blood will wash away all your sins and you will receive a new heart full of love. Your old ways will all of a sudden become obsolete because you will be made a new creature in Christ. That is, the, that is what the blood will do and that is what it did for Saul. When he accepted the blood of Jesus into his heart, his mission instantly changed. He was no longer focused on hunting down Christians. But what would have happened if God didn't look at Saul and what he could become through the blood? How many more Christians would Saul have killed? When you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, you will want to serve him and tell others about Jesus. When Saul was faced with the truth, he was given a choice to accept or reject salvation. When Saul asked the Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? He was surrendering completely over to Jesus. Saul wanted to do God's will in his life. It's amazing how Saul was, went from arresting Christians to becoming one. But that is the power that is in the blood of Jesus. The Lord had great plans for Saul's life and he was going to suffer much for the sake of Christ. But he had a first to go to the city and wait for further instructions. Sometimes we have to wait to come into our calling after we receive salvation. There is a preparation time. The Holy Ghost was preparing us for years for what we were going to have to do in this Jesus ministry to win lost souls. Some have remained faithful and have been used by God in a great way. While others have become impatient and have gone back out to the pleasures of this world. In Saul's case, he immediately followed the instructions of the Lord, which was to go into the city and wait for further instructions. When the Lord struck Saul down on the way to Damascus, Damascus he lost his physical eyesight, but he gained spiritual vision, which was so much more valuable than his physical eyesight. Three days Saul did not eat or drink while he was blind. Saul was fasting and praying. Saul had a new relationship with Jesus Christ. Now there was a Christian named Ananias in Damascus who the Lord came to in a vision. The Lord gives Ananias directions to go to Straight Street, to the house of Judas, to ask for Saul of Tarsus. Before Ananias goes any further, he wants to let the Lord know that he has concerns about, Paul, about Saul's past behavior. He reminds the Lord of the, all the evil Saul has done to the saints in Jerusalem. And now he has the authority by the chief priest to arrest anyone that follows Jesus. The Lord doesn't need reminded of Saul's sins. He knows everything about Saul 
and all that he's done and all that he's planning on doing. Now I can see how Ananias could have had an issue about going to pray for Saul. After all, he was going to come face to face with a murderer. But the Lord let Ananias know that Saul was cho a chosen vessel to bear his name before Gentiles and kings and to the children of Israel. And that Saul was going to suffer great things for his namesake. God gave Ananias some insight as to what Saul was going to achieve through the blood of Jesus. And God was wanting Ananias to look at him through the blood of Jesus. It doesn't matter how bad of a sinner a person is. We must look at what they can become through the blood of Jesus. God did not put us in charge of deciding who should receive mercy and grace through the blood. That's why the Bible instructs us to judge not. In Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 and 2. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. But some people resent when God shows mercy to a sinner and they become self-righteous and biased towards that person. They don't like, they don't look at the sinner through the blood of Jesus. No, instead they look at them through judgment and condemnation. We can see an example of this in Luke's gospel. When Jesus went to eat at, a, at the house of a Pharisee named Simon. While Jesus sat at meat, the Bible says a woman from the city who was a sinner came and brought a box of alabaster ointment and stood at the feet of Jesus and wept and began to wash his feet with her tears and then wiped them with her hairs and kiss his feet and anoint them with oil. This woman was seeking redemption from her sins. But Simon wasn't moved with compassion towards her. Instead, he looks at Jesus and the woman with a critical spirit. Simon thought within himself that if Jesus was a prophet, he would know who and what manner of woman it was that was touching him, that she was a sinner. Jesus knew what Simon was thinking, and he took an opportunity to teach Simon a lesson that we all can learn from. In Luke chapter 7, verses 44 through 47, I read, And he, meaning Jesus, turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint. But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But to whom little is given, the same loveth little. When you look at a sinner through the blood of Jesus, you will have compassion on them. You will want to help them to find Jesus Christ. But when you look at a sinner with a judgmental spirit and refuse to share the love of Jesus with them, then you are like Simon. Simon invited Jesus into his home, but he did not wash Jesus' feet. He did not greet him with a kiss. 
And he did not anoint his head with oil. In other words, he did not show Jesus any love or respect. But here was a sinner woman who humbly came before Jesus and washed his feet with her tears and wiped them with her hairs from her head and then anointed his feet with oil. And Jesus said that she loved much. When you show love to others, you will show love to Jesus. Child of God, there are many times when the Holy Ghost will want you to witness to someone who is a terrible sinner like Saul was. The question is, will you be obedient? Ananias was called to pray for Saul, but was he going to look at Saul through the blood of Jesus or through his own physical eyesight? God let Ananias know that Saul was going to be a great vessel for the Lord. But whether the Lord gives us insight or not about a soul, he still wants us to treat every soul with compassion. We don't know if a soul, if the soul that we win is going to save thousands of souls or maybe just one soul. But the bottom line here is that every soul we win for Christ is one less soul that's going to hell. We all can help increase God's kingdom just by being in our place and showing the love of Christ to not only our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, but to sinners also. Ananias was in his place and he was obedient to go pray for Saul. And looking back, I'm sure that he was glad that he did because Saul was a great soul winner. A great soul winner. And, they, and the Lord changed Saul's name to Paul. It's hard to say how many souls he won for the Lord these past 2,000 years with this wonderful testimony that's in the Bible. We can't look at a person and decide if they're worthy or not to come to salvation. That is why Jesus died on the cross to make it all possible that everybody can become a new creature in Christ. It's not to, uh, to us. We just have to be in our place and let the Holy Spirit lead us. Jesus came with compassion for lost souls. And we must have that same compassion and love for everybody. Miracles and healings come through the blood. But do you look at your sickness and disease through the blood or through human reason? The doctors may tell you that there is nothing that they can do for you. But that doesn't mean you can't be healed. When you look at sickness through the blood, you will see that all things are possible if only you believe. You will see Naaman dipping seven times in Jordan and being delivered of leprosy. You will see Lazarus coming out of the tomb alive and be, that after being dead four days, you will see blind Bartimaeus receiving his sight. You will see an empty tomb where Jesus laid because he has risen from the dead. If you don't look through the blood, then you will, if you don't look through the blood, you will limit God. The blood of Jesus defies all laws of physics and it defies human logic. We have miracles and healings in our services because we believe in the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Many incurable diseases have been healed when doctors could no longer help. 
That's the power that's in the blood of Jesus. Recently, my wife and I interviewed someone on our Grace Family Show that was diagnosed with leukemia that had spread all through his body and he only had two weeks to live. That person came and received prayer from Reverend Angley and went back to the doctors and they couldn't find any cancer at all. That was over 20 years ago and he is still cancer free today. He's an usher right here. <laughs> Nothing is too hard for our God if we will look at it through the blood. No mountain is too high if we look at it through the blood. No valley is too low if we look at it through the blood. No problem is too big if we look at it through the blood. We must look through the blood daily like never before because the hour is late and the devil is going to do everything in his power to try to defeat us. Friend, if you haven't been looking at souls through the blood, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Take on the compassion of Jesus and learn to love, not to judge. Remember, the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. Sinner backslider, Jesus loves you and he wants you to receive eternal life. And you can only have eternal life through the blood of Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. It doesn't matter what sins you have committed. Jesus can make you brand new through the blood. I would like to give everybody this opportunity to accept Jesus Christ in their heart through the blood of Jesus. All you have to do is say this prayer with me, friend. Say, oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. But I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. It doesn't matter what sickness or disease that's in your body. Just like the young man that I was talking about earlier, over 20 years ago, he had leukemia all through his body. He only had two weeks to live. But God healed him through the blood of Jesus. Friend, let's get your miracle for you right now. It doesn't matter what sickness or disease is in your body. Let's pull down heaven. Put your hand on your listening device. And those of you that are watching, put your hand on the television screen against mine right now. This is a point of contact and you're just gonna release your faith, expecting God to move for you right now for whatever your need is. Lord, Heavenly Father, I call down a great anointing for them to receive their miracle for whatever it may be. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus. Move for each and every request that has come in. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let everything come to normal in their body. Lord, let him feel your holy presence come upon them. In the blood name of Jesus, it's all through the blood. Amen. Now at this time, I'd like everybody to stand up. And those of you that need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, go ahead and go to my left, your right. 
And you, we have great workers over there to help you to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And those of you that are watching right now, if you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, all you have to do is just say one glory right after another. And as you're saying those glories, sending them right up to heaven from your heart, from your heart, this is this, from your heart up to heaven, mean it with your whole heart and he'll come in. You just have to trust him and give him the freedom of liberty to use your tongue to speak in a heavenly language. Yes, yes. Let him bless you in a great way. Now we're going to pull down heaven and call down the Holy Ghost so you can receive. Lord, as I call down this great anointing upon them, receive ye the Holy Ghost, receive ye the Holy Ghost, and just keep on praising them. Just keep on praising them. Lifting up those praises, friend. This is what he wants, a yielded vessel. Just you and Jesus. Just you and Jesus. Just lifting up those praises. Fall in love with those praises. Yes, yes, let him, let's let him move for you. Yes, look for every sign of improvement. Yes, praise him, yes. Yes, just yield on over. Yes, he's taking those glories. Let him take those glories. Let him change those glories. Yes, yield over to those changes. You and Jesus. You and Jesus. Yes, let him bless you. Let him bless you. Lifting up those praises. Glorifying Jesus. Glorifying the King. Praise in Jesus. Yes. Praise in Jesus. Glorifying the King. Glorifying Jesus. Yes, let that power go all through your body. Glorifying Jesus. Yes, let him bless you. Yield to that love. Yield to that grace. Glorifying Jesus. Yes, he is worthy. He is so worthy. Yes, give all and receive all, friend. Just give all and receive all. Yes, glorifying Jesus. Yes, just open up all the way. Let that power go all through your body. Glorifying Jesus. Glorifying the King. Praise in Jesus. Lifting up those praises from your heart to heaven. Glorifying Jesus. Yes, let him bless you. Lifting up those praises. Praise in Jesus. Praise him for your miracle. Let the Holy Spirit come on in. Praise in Jesus. Praise in the King. This is what he wants, a yielded vessel. Yes, glorifying Jesus. Glorifying the King. Praise in Jesus. Yes, thank him. Thank him in a wonderful way. Let him bless you. Glorifying the King. Praise in Jesus. Praise in Jesus. Praise in Jesus. To set you free, he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. In your deepest valleys, he'll always be there, never leave you alone.
Imagina 